Russian army rising. The church is the breeding grounds for raising godly men and women who are willing to apply kingdom principles and values to bring transformation to their respective societies. We need to have a national focus. We don't have to lose this ambition or else we work against the Great Commission. They are equipped in righteousness. Unless our righteousness exceeds those who just know ABC and suffice others to do, but they don't do. Unless we see that. We pray for God to raise right ministers in our nations. We pray for God to raise right tax collectors. We pray for God to raise right security agents. They are bold and fearless. Standing your ground when the battle has been heated to such an extent that everyone is running away. But we don't quit. For we know no defeat. The agenda to possess the nations. Welcome to an equipping center of the word and prayer on Pentecost hour. Stay tuned in. This morning here at Pensa, Cape Costa University, I pray to you on equipped as a soldier, equipped as an army. If you are writing equipped as a soldier, comma, equipped as an army. Equipped as a soldier, comma, equipped as an army. And I know that together as a church, I believe that you know that what God is giving us to do is equipping the church as an army to possess the nations. Hallelujah. And we want to read from the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 13. We will read verse 20 and then I'll come to the book of Ephesians. Hebrews chapter 13, Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. And now may the God of peace, then he brings a dash explaining this God of peace, who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, and ratified an eternal covenant with the blood, then he brings a dash back. It means that he has finished explaining. Now he's going to make his statement. May he equip you with all that you need for doing his will. Oh, man, amen, and may he produce in you somebody said produce in me through the power of Jesus Christ every good thing that is pleasing to him and all glory to him forever and amen if you have an eye look at your bible look in the verse again and now may the God of peace I jump to verse 21 May he equip you with all that you need. Oh, man, tell me no cry. May he equip you with all that you need for doing his will. And may that God produce in you. Produce in who? Produce in you through the power of Jesus every good thing that is pleasing to him. And all glory to him forever and ever. Amen. This is so big a text, we don't have to attempt to respond to all of it. But at least you can see the word equip there. This is a prayer of a mighty apostle, one of the greatest apostles ever. The Lord snatched him from the use of the devil in the church. The devil sometimes can use people in the church. But God snatches him and then God begins to use him in a mighty way. He becomes a great apostle and God is using him to open churches, preach the gospel, get people born again. God used him to write almost half of the New Testament. His name is Apostle Paul. And we believe strongly that he wrote this book. Though uh, it is not clear from the very beginning that he wrote it. But the way Apostle Paul writes, maybe some part of it is just like this. And so many people believe that he wrote it. I believe also that maybe he wrote it. But he said that may God, this great apostle, this great man of God, very close to God, is praying. He's praying for the church. He's praying for you and I. And the prayer is that, and now may the God of peace, that God, may he equip you. Oh, hallelujah. This year, I just cannot, I just, I just cannot play it down. God is working in my life. 
God is equipping me. He's arranging great things in me. He's bringing his beauty upon me. He is endowing me with great things from him. Oh, hallelujah. And I got God. I remember when we were young and we were getting ready for school. Our moms would take time to dress us. Sometimes your dad, you know, you, after ironing your shirt, they would tuck it in, put a belt on you, make sure that the flaps are on and everything is okay. It's my dad working on me, equipping me to be nice and go to school. I just cannot imagine God working on me, putting me in shape, and then releasing me to go and do something. My daddy released me to go to school, but this God, after working on us, the Bible says that may he equip you with all that you need for doing as well. The school I will go to is that I will go and do the will of God. Oh, I'm in this Accra. There will be many people in the world, but some of us that God has equipped, we will be found doing the will of God. I pray that the Lord will equip you. I pray that you'll be doing the will of God. Hallelujah. This equipping or this work that God is doing on us, the apostle said, may God equip you with all that you need. All that you need is a holistic equipment. It's a holistic equipment. Hallelujah. It's all around in your life. Your spiritual life, your academic life, your social life, your financial life, your family life, all that concerns you. The psalm said that the Lord will perfect all that which concerns you. God will not do this and leave the other one. Listen, the will of God is that you do so well. That is why after everything in Pensa, you got to go and sit on your bottles and learn and make sure that you are making ace. Make sure that you are making ace. Eh? Mr. President, I hope you are listening to me. After you have done everything, go and sit down and learn. When you are feeling sleepy, take a nap, come back, learn and make the grace. Because that is the will of God for your life, that you excel in all things. We have the mind of Christ, we cannot fail. Praise the Lord. The Bible said the memory of the righteous man is a blessing. If you are here and you are struggling with the academics, may the power of God come upon you right now. May God equip you in that area also. May you not be an average student. Rise up. After all, those who are in the first class, are they not human beings? And is it not we're learning that they got there? We are also human beings. And we're learning in the grace of God we can get there. Oh, I'm in this Accra. May he equip you with all that you need for doing his will. And may he produce in you. I like it. You know, when the Holy Ghost is working in us, he produces in us. He produces in us. May he produce in you to the power of Jesus Christ every good thing that is pleasing to God. And may he do this only to the glory of his name. Can we have an amen on that one? We learn from this text that who is equipping us? Yes, who is equipping us? Yes, what we learn? Who is equipping us? Oh, until, yes. God is equipping us. Are we together on that? All right. Then when we read the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter, chapter 4, when you go home, you can read it. Take time to read from verse 8 to 13. You see there that God, though he's the one equipping, the Lord equips us also with his men. Men that he calls into the ministry, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. If we bring it, elders, deacons, deaconess, pensa, president, LCC members, everybody who has spiritual authority over you that God has put there. The Lord uses them to equip you by the word of God, by leadership, by counseling, by guidance, by discipline and all the things that leaders do, we are working on you as a child of God so that, I mean, you'll be equipped. Can I have an amen on that one? So God is at work in my life as an individual, but he's at work in the church also. That is why I said equipped as a soldier and then equipped as an army. God is at work in my life as an individual to equip me for every good I mean, will of his. But he's also equipping all of us together. 
And so when we come together like this, there are many things that we must continually improve upon ourselves. I don't know if time will allow me, but you see, the atmosphere of miracles and excitement and greatness is produced. I mean, it can be produced. If you come to church and you say like this, and, and, you, are, and you are just looking on, Compared to somebody who has come to church, praise the Lord, hallelujah, move on, amen. And then so much into, into it. Like we are rising up together, we are putting our hands together, we are sharing on and joy. We can produce a service that is better than everybody sitting like this. And someone say, praise the Lord. And you say, hallelujah. <laughs> praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. So, are you in church? Are you listening to the word of God? Are some boys, boys in the house of God? Then I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is working on us. And this year as a church, some of the things we are looking at are equipping our services so that it can be enriched. It can be better. It can be exciting. It will be an atmosphere where God is working and where all other things like fiscal things are in place. Of course, time will not allow me to talk about all that. But now, two points are made. God is equipping us. Make sure that you hold on to God throughout the year. That God continue to equip me. And make sure that God has equipped you. Don't leave this year I mean, ordinary as a member of the Church of Pentecost, as a member of Pensa. Hold on to God and, and, and make it a task with God that he is equipping you. That is my task for the year. I will never remain the same. And I'll make sure that once he has said it, he really equips me. Hallelujah. Amen. Then I made a point that God may equip you through the leaders in the church. Not only that, the Lord will equip you through your parents. Not only that, he will equip you through your roommates. He will equip you through the people you meet. The harsh treatment you go through and everything. The Bible said, even that I have refined you as silver and gold. Not with the fairness of fire, but with the fairness of affliction. What does it mean? Even the struggles you go through, the financial struggles, the worries, pleasurable treatments you receive from others, and everything you go through, the Lord equips us with that. Praise the Lord. As a child of God, you are never on your own. You are never, I mean, a free isotope swangling here and there. You are in God's project. I mean, you are God's project. The Bible said that he has you in his arm. The Bible said that you are the apple of God's eye. Nothing happens to you by chance. Whatever we go through is part of the story. And it's part of our building up. Hallelujah. And so, me, I don't have issues with people in life. Whatever you do to me, I look at you and I say that, well, what can I learn from what is happening here? And then I pick it to add to my life. And I know that there are other people in the world like you. And now God has equipped me to know that I have to uh, be careful with how I relate. And so I pick it on. Praise the Lord. But the point I'm trying to make, I mean, or a final text I'll read for the day. And then I'll come into a very short time of uh, picking some few things together with you. It's from the book of Ephesians chapter 6. That one I'll read from verse 10 downwards. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, that was. I'm still reading the New Living Translation. A final word. Now, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. A final word he says. This is the same apostle, the great apostle I'm talking about. He has written one of the wonderful books in the Bible, the book of Ephesians. This book, I don't have time to talk about, but it's very important. So important that people have even said that if the Bible was to be rearranged, this book should have been the first. Because it talks about the purpose, the plans. And purpose always comes before creation. We have to say that we need something that people will use to preach. And that will be the purpose before we go and create a pulpit. We have to have a purpose that we need something that people will sit on before we go and create it. And so the book of Ephesians is about the purpose of God. It reveals what God wants to do, what the devil is trying to do against what God wants to do. The church, you and I, where do we stand in what God wants to do? 
and we get to see that the devil also wants to use us against what God wants to do. And so in the book of Ephesians, we are charged on that have a purpose. Let your purpose be in line with the purpose of God and make sure the devil doesn't use you against the purpose of God. It makes us know that after all things, our schooling and whatever, what really goes on, all things will pass away. But what really will go on is God and his will and what God is doing. Praise the Lord. Ephesians gives us a better purpose to live for in life. And that purpose is to find ourselves in the will of God. That is why the book that we read, he said, may he equip you with what is good so that you do his will. After all, that is what matters. After our degrees and all that, what really matters is where you are in the purpose of God and what contribution you made in the achievement of that purpose. And so this great apostle, after writing this important book, he says that, well, maybe they may forget, but as I'm concluding, verse 10, a final word to you. The other version will say, finally, finally, we will see the beer. As for this one, don't forget. I want you to know that you have to be strong in the Lord. And you have to be, uh, what? You have to be strong in the Lord and be strong in his mighty power. What is he saying? God has a, a plan. God has a purpose. And the devil is fighting against it. And God has created you and I, the church. And he wants to use us to accomplish his will. But the devil is fighting us. And so those of us who are helping God or want to be on God's side, the devil will fight us. And he talks about the spiritual battle. And he says that if God is wanting to use you as his will, and you are not strong and the devil brings you down, how would you contribute? And so, if you be able to make a point, if you be able to contribute and be on God's side and, 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 and not be on the devil's side or the devil not bring you down, finally, what you need to do is that you must be strong in God. You must be strong in Jesus. Listen, he said be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. These are two different things. Be strong in God that that man called God, that man called Jesus, Beno, eh? Beno, be close to him every day. And where do we meet Jesus? In his word. Every day in the morning and our quiet time, every Christian must meet Jesus. Listen, the whole equation is that every minute you must be with Jesus, and if you fail, yejahuako. What does it mean? It means that we'll be getting on. I picture it as God raining down the rains upon us. And all the time, I mean all the men, our father, Apostle Nyameche, our father, the general secretary, our mothers and all this. Every day they are in the presence of God and they are receiving these rains. Their buckets are getting full. And you, today is there, the next day you have covered it, the next day you have removed. The beer, your measure is not coming up. Every second you joke with Jesus, you are caught. Every morning, meet that man, Jesus. When we are in his presence, the Bible said, your servant will grow up before you like a tender shoot. When we are before him, we are growing in power, in strength, in understanding him, and then we are becoming mighty in God. Then he can use us to accomplish his will. Do you understand what you are saying? So if you want to do something for God, you can't joke with your personal devotion. You can't become a baby in the hand of the church. That Maba put pampers on me. And I've come do something, and you are then you just stay. It is not the church that will make you; it is Jesus that will make you. Amen. And Jesus is not locked in the church rooms; He's with you wherever you are. So grow in Him, and come to church with fire. Amen. That's what the Bible said. And when you meet each one coming. You are coming with a spiritual song. You are coming with a prophecy. You are coming with a teaching. You are coming with a word. That is the New Testament church. People in love with Jesus, meeting him every day. Something is doing them in their heart. And they come and they make a contribution. We don't come to absorb. We come to make a contribution. I hope I'm preaching some people in the house of God. Finally, Make sure that you are being strong in Jesus every day. Make sure that you are strong in the power, in his mighty power. That is the doing of his will. 
the doing of his work, be involved in what God is doing, display his power. But he said, how are we going to do this? He said, put on the whole or the full armor of God so that ye will be able to stand against all the strategies of the devil, all the schemes of the devil. Once you said you want to be on God's side and you are helping in the purpose of God, know that the devil will fight you. But if you are going to stand against that fight, then you must be strong. That is what he's saying. Be strong. Put on the full armor of God so that you'll be able to stand against all the schemes of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against evil rulers, authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirit in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil or in the day of trouble. There is a certain day called the day of evil. That day, <laughs> the day when trouble and sin find you at a corner. The day when it looks like all hell is loose against you. The day where help is just not available. And if you are not careful, you fall. That day is the day of evil. He says that put on, make sure that you put on every one of the armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, and I tell you, the day of evil comes. Sometimes it comes as a free opportunity, like in the day, in the time of Joseph. Uh, we are here until you understand. In the book of Proverbs, there's a text. The prostitute came to I mean, as they were writing, the prostitute, one of the things that, oh, this is free. And she, she made a statement that I have paid my monthly bills. And so it's free. What does it mean? I'm in my safe period. Yeah, if you meet me, nothing will happen. This is a day of trouble. If you are not strong in God, your center of gravity will shift. Then there's a day of trouble like <laughs> feeling, feeling you are being thrown into the lion's den. And they are catching you. So you, you, you. All you need to do is to bow. Is that not it? All you need to do is to say that I won't serve any other God. Or the day that they are feeling, feeling catching you and throwing you into the oven heated seven times. When you see trouble, you say, no, no, I don't know Jesus. And a good opportunity that is being given you but you have to compromise or trouble and struggle that you have to go through if you still insist to be holy and to walk with Jesus. The day of trouble moves in several dimensions but it's a test on your strength as a child of God. That is what reveals who you really are. That's what I want to say. Therefore now that the day of trouble has not come make sure that you put on everyone. Everyone. I said everyone of this version says that of the pieces of the armor of God so that you'll be able to resist the devil in the time or the day of evil. And after that, you will be able to stand. When you put it on and the day of evil comes, my friend, you'll be able to stand. Oh, hallelujah. Are you sure you are still with me in church? You've got to do it now. You've got to prepare against the day of evil. Praise the Lord. And as I said, if you are increasing day by day, the demands of trouble, you see that you are moving on. The demands of trouble, you are moving on. You are mastering strength beyond the demands of trouble. That is what we see in Joseph. His strength was bigger than the demand of the temptation. He said, how can I do this again? He goes, my friend. Then the woman was struggling. Then he left his clothes and went. They said, prison. He said, let's go. And then on and on, the Lord fulfilled whatever he has said about him. Hallelujah. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. I think here I want to read the NIV from that verse. Verse 13. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet, 
fitted with the readiness that comes from preaching the gospel. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Praise the Lord. Verse 17. Somebody say verse 17. Tell your friend, look at verse 17. Look at verse 17. Look at it. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions. You know what? A New Testament believer, all the time you should be praying. Some song of the Holy Ghost must be going on constantly in your heart. So we are talking with a friend, but we are praying. We are bathing, but the tongues is coming out. Oh, hallelujah. Even if you know how to play football and you are dribbling. That is the only reason why the Bible can tell us pray continuously. Pray unceasingly. Hallelujah. Let your spirit be praying all the time. Let your spirit be singing all the time. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hey, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. All the time in my heart, praise God. Occasions is part of the weapons or part of the armory of God. But if you listen to me very well, Apostle Paul said, Make sure that you put on all the armor, the full armor of God. Let's come to the practical session. If you met a soldier, he had his shoes on, but his trousers is off. He was in boxer shorts. And then the top, he was in the military, I mean, uh, uniform. And then he had his guns, everything okay. Would you take him serious? Because, ah, uh, in, in gun, how would they say it? Oh, oh yes, I can't, right? Or what? Eh? Oh, oh yes, I can't, or what? <laughs> this military man is getting mad. Sometimes the devil stands and looks at God's army. And when we are all marching across, one, two, one, two, he looks at some of the members and says, No, what's happening? I see some of them not in trousers. Look at this one. He's wearing everything. He's not in shoes. He's not in boots. Look at this one, Otto. He doesn't have his, his sword. Look at him. Hey, where is his shield? And that is that. You know what? Apostle Paul did not just waste words by saying that make sure you put on the full armor of God. An army that is not rightly dressed is a fun to the devil. If you understand this thing, for instance, the Bible says make sure that you put on uh, the boot, the sandal of the proclamation of the gospel of faith. It's, it, it means that if the church and the Christian is not preaching the gospel, you're in Shempaboa. A local assembly that is not preaching the gospel, a pencil group that is not preaching the gospel is, is barefooted. The Christian who is not preaching the gospel, you are dressed all right on Shempaboa. Where can you go? Where can you go? And so, I don't have time to deal with all the details, but at least remember that he said, make sure that you put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand. And then he goes on to mention all the full armor, the belt of truth. He mentioned the breastplate of righteousness. And then he talks about what? The sandals of the proclamation of the gospel of peace. He also talks about the shield of faith. Then he talks about... Uh, what is called the helmet of salvation and I needed you to watch that video unfortunately we can't I needed you to watch it the helmet of salvation protects your mind so that nobody may deceive you with their nonsense eh? unnecessary things that so called prophet are doing in Africa so many things, mixing so many things 
with, with, with the name of Christ. And then now they are even rising against the Bible, claiming that they know more than the Bible, claiming that the Bible is a waste of time. And so we should come and listen to their deception. The Bible says that when we are getting to the end of the age, so many so-called prophets, so many so-called teachers, they will come and they will be what? The devil personified. The Bible says in the last days, demons will teach. Demons will be in the teaching ministry. They will be in the prophetic ministry. And what they will be doing is to deceive people against the faith so that they will make them lose their precious inheritance. They will deceive them with what sounds like wisdom but it's foolishness. That is why the Bible said, put on the helmet of salvation. On the salvation you have, put the, 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 what, we, the, what we call it, the helmet on, protect it, so that nobody will shoot a virus into your mind and get you distracted. If you want to use common sense to listen to people, you lose your faith very soon. Somebody said, ah, lady, look at how she's nicely appearing. And even now that she's looking nice, nobody is proposing to her. And you want her to fast. You want her to fast and, and reduce, I mean, weight. And, and you want her to basa. What sense does it make for making somebody looking for uh, God's breakthrough to fast? This is anti-Christian. This is anti-Bible. This is from the devil. From the devil. But how does it look like? It looks nice with the mind. Is that not it? Because you don't want your looks to come down. You want to appear from but it's from the pit of hell. And you need the helmet of salvation right on so that nobody may deceive you. Praise the Lord. And then it talks about other things which time will not allow me to go into. But my practical session, the first one is, I gave, is the one I gave you. If it is not on, if you are not fully putting it on, you are funny. And it means that you are not complete. And I also wanted to paint some picture uh, that it is discipline and exercise that makes an army stronger. People in the army are training themselves, discipline themselves, going every day. As an army of God and as a soldier, you must do the same every day with Jesus. Practicing fasting and prayer, have your own plan and shadow. When in the week do you fast? When in the week do you do this? Are you reading the Bible? Are you doing this? Be on it. Your daily disciplines and exercises. That is what keeps you strong as a soldier. And when we are doing it well, involving ourselves in the church, Bible studying, and all the things we are doing in the church, that is when we are doing it well as an army too. I want to also talk to you about the number game. The larger the number of the army, or I mean the size of the army, the more fearsome they are. If there was a trouble in town, a problem that I said, oh, soldier for neighbor, uh, the soldiers are coming. And then we went there. How many are the soldiers? Three. Everybody was, ah. I mean, uh, some part of the north, the trouble there, and then you bring three soldiers. They won't take it serious. But if you move them in armored vehicles, we, we, many of them, you see that they bring fear and terror upon the town, upon the situation. What does it mean? The more we are, the better for us. In Pensa, we must preach the gospel. In Pensa, we must follow up those who are not coming. In Pensa, somebody must be your friend. If you're a Pensa member and all you do is you take your bath, dress nice, you come and sit here, you go, and you are not doing a ministry of looking for the brother or the sister or the other one or inviting someone or preaching the gospel. No, that's not it. The more we are, the better. So look at it. When we started church, not many of you were not here. We're all worried. LCC, were you not worried? If you are a true leader, you should be worried. Are they coming or not? You are looking at the numbers. The numbers, God works with the numbers. The Bible says they would have stoned him, but for the multitude, but for the people. Even Jesus, the numbers were a defense war for him. So I want you to know that don't come and sit aloof. Look for some, especially when the freshest come. Look for the freshest, visit them, bring them to church, Bring them to Jesus, be involved. The more we are, the better. And the next time I come here, I want to see the whole place filled up. Oh, can I have a living amen on that one? As if you bring your friend, we have multiplied. Remember that the larger the size of the army, the more fearsome they are. I'll give you two more, and then 
I'll be gone. Remember, I'm talking about equipped as a soldier, equipped as an army. Another thing that makes an army fearsome is the kind of leaders they have. They say, Commander this, and you know that it's serious. They say, Commander this, and you, can't, you don't take them serious. And for us, Jesus is our first leader. Oh, hallelujah. So we are very fearsome and uh, uh, army, but there is a role for leaders, LCC members, principal president, and all of you. You must be serious. You must be committed. You must be prayerful. You must study the word. Remember that an army is fearsome. Also based on the kind of leader they have. Our leaders must be ready. They must be committed. They must be trained. They must be passionate. And they must be fearless doing what they must do. And then maybe the last one that I want to talk about uh, maybe I'll just talk about another part of the fiscal component. An army is also feared based on the kind of accoutrement they are using. If the army came and they don't have, all of them are using one AK-47. <laughs> we're too young. No, we are coaching. No, we're too young. <laughs> are we going to take them serious? You don't take them serious. So every army needs some kind of gadget, some kind of accoutrement they need. It means that we have to give attention to everything that we use, our instruments. Uh, it deserves that we give it attention. It deserves that we make sure that it's the best. Our music should be the best. You know, I was looking at the songs we were singing. Many of them are tree songs. That is good. Tree is an international language. But there shouldn't be too many also. I realized that when our friend, the lady came and, and raised another song, I worship is my weapon. All of you were excited and the worship changed. You see, because you connected with that song more. It means that the worship leader must, be, must, 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 must have a cocktail. So, COP, traditional songs, COP, contemporary English songs, some Nigerian songs, maybe yeah, some, Bible, uh, a good mix of that because this is a campus and then a good use of good, I mean, English, uh, I mean, Western gospel song that will do it our music should be very good our prayers should be good and then our sound system and everything we are doing it must receive attention don't let us come before you start twisting it here and there and we must continue to make sure that things are going very well and i pray that the lord will continue to work on us hallelujah all together as god is working on us God is using leaders to work on us, our parents, our friends, the issues we meet in life, different people, different places. God is working in our lives. And as God calls us to make sure that we put on the full armor, every one of these armors come from the word of God. Listen to what I said very well. Though he said we should put on all the armors, all the armors, they come from the word of God. If there was time, I would have taking you to all of them in the world. The bed of truth is the word. The helmet of salvation. I mean, is it not the word? So, the more you are with the word, the more you are getting the weapons on you. So, I have called you to personal responsibility. Your morning is for Jesus. Your evening is for Jesus. Your afternoon is for Jesus. You waste time, we are going. And as a soldier, this is your discipline. I made you know that you have a place in equipping the church. Just as God is equipping us, you must take your place. Tell somebody about Jesus. Look for your friend who is not here. Make sure that you are bringing fire into the service. Make sure that you are bringing excitement into the service. Don't just come to receive, come to give. After all, it's more blessed to give than to receive. I say that the leaders are to give attention. They are love and passion. And excellence must be in what we are doing. Let's come and cook a service that brings glory. And make sure that the weapons or the armory that the Lord is talking about, though I couldn't go into detail, they are in place in your life. Apostle Paul said, finally, and I also want to say, finally, you, make sure that you are strong in the Lord and make sure that you are strong in the power of his mind. The power is in your hand now. We are giving you the responsibility over your own life. Would you close your eye? You want to thank Jesus? Say that, dear Lord, I want to thank you for your word. Maybe you want to be on your feet, but begin to thank
Thanks for listening to today's word. Subscribe to our social media handles for life-transforming messages.